This video is going to be a more formal introduction to the central limit theorem. Really, that just means the notation, the uh, mathematical symbols we're going to use are going to be a little bit more formal. And because of that, I can speak to the requirements on the population from which we are sampling to make the statement more accurate. So we're going to start as we did in the informal introduction to the central limit theorem. We'll remind you that random variables show up in patterns, and we call these patterns distributions. We'll begin to think of the sample mean as a random variable. Then we'll make a formal statement of the central limit theorem. And finally, jump into R to see an example about how you can begin to visualize the central limit theorem. So here we go. Assume we have capital N independent and that is independent and identically distributed uh, random variables from a population F. Now in this case I don't actually care what the population is such that the distribution we are sampling from could be any of the following. It could be a right skewed population. Let's just annotate these with reminders. It could be a left skewed population or it could be an attempt at drawing but it's meant to be a symmetric population. We don't actually care what distribution these observations follow so long as we know there is some distribution such that smaller numbers show up more frequently than larger numbers, we call that right skewed, or such that larger numbers show up more frequently than smaller numbers, we might call that left skewed, or that there's an equal chance that both big and large numbers show up, we call that symmetric. Any of these three are patterns for which data could show up, and any of these three could be uh, the distribution F. We don't actually care as far as the central limit theorem is concerned. So with our n data points, claim that you can, I claim that you can add them all up and divide by however many there are. Now these random variables, the x1 through xn, are random variables because you don't know until you observe the value the variable takes on. Because you don't know the value the variable takes on, we call these random variables. Well, similarly, this expression here is a singular variable whose value we don't know. Because we don't know this variable's value until we observe it, it is a random variable, and the question remains, what type of distribution, whoops, what type of distribution does that singular random variable follow? Is it a right skewed distribution, a left skewed distribution, or is it symmetric or even approximately symmetric? And the sample mean, this singular value, by the central limit theorem, approximately follows the normal distribution. So we might write that as saying, um, no, let's just dive into it more formally now. We're going to define this quantity to be Sn. Let's just use as a new symbol for the sample mean Sn. So here goes a formal statement of the central limit theorem. Suppose as above you have capital N independent and identically distributed random variables from a population F with the expected value of any of these individual random variables, so I'm leaving the subscript off, 
any and all of these random variables have a expected value mu, a variance, again leaving the subscript off to suggest that the variance is common to all of these identically distributed random variables, we have a variance that is strictly finite and that is going to be one of our biggest requirements for the central limit theorem. The variance needs to be finite. Then if Sn is put to be literally just saying we are just going to define this symbol to mean the following expression. If that's the case, then the following expression, that is the sample mean minus the population mean mu quantity multiplied by the square root of the sample size, this calculation as a single random variable approximately follows the normal distribution centered at zero with a variance of sigma squared. That is that same population variance from our original population distribution. This is a formal statement of the central limit theorem telling us that the following first centered, that is sample mean minus mu, that is centering, and then scaled quantity, that is take the sample mean, center it by mu, and scale it by the square root of the sample size, that expression then approximately follows the normal distribution where the mean of this new random variable is centered at zero and has a variance of sigma squared. The approximation here improves as the sample size tends to infinity. And in fact, if you take that limit out mathematically, you will get rid of the approximation part here, but that's never gonna happen in the real world, so we always just phrase it as an approximate statement. Next, we'll go into R. I'm going to want to make plots later on, so I'm gonna load the library ggplot2. And I'm going to choose f to be exponential lambda equal to 2. Now with that, I know, because I looked up on Wikipedia, that the population mean is equal to 0 0.5, and the population variance is also equal to, it is... 0.5 squared, which will give us a standard deviation of 0.5. I'm going to pretend that the population from which we sample is the exponential with rate parameter lambda equal to 2. And then the way we can visualize the central limit theorem is by sampling capital R sample means from this population distribution exponential uh, with lambda equal to 2. So I'm just going to pick some reasonable default values. I'm going to pre-allocate a vector to store my multiple sample means. And then in a for loop, I'm just going to put into the rth value of sample means the mean of randomly generated exponential data with sample size n and rate parameter 2. So here we go. Now the central limit theorem is telling us that the distribution of the sample means is approximately normal. So if we make a density plot of the multiple sample means, what we get out is a roughly normal distribution of the sample mean. That's 
entertaining. Now what we can see further is that if we take our sample means and we center them by the population mean and scale them by the square root of the sample size, I'm just going to call that a new variable z temporarily, then the mean of z should be approximately zero, and it is quite close, and the standard deviation of z should be very close to 0 0.5, the standard deviation of the original population. So let's see how we do. And indeed, this is a confirmation, but not proof, that the central limit theorem works in this scenario. Now the central limit theorem in this case works because we have generated independent random variables from the exponential distribution. They are all identically distributed with from the exponential distribution with lambda equal to 2, and in this case, the variance is finite. Because these two requirements were met, we see that the sample mean, uh, sample means as a distribution are approximately normal, they are centered at the population mean like they should be, and the standard deviation of the appropriately centered and scaled sample means, the standard deviation of those centered and scaled random variables is quite close, here this 0.509, quite close to the true population standard deviation of 0.5. Now if our sample size were to go up, theoretically we would converge closer to that true standard deviation of 0.5.